Hey guys, and welcome back to Living the Dream. I am very, very excited to bring you the next guest. This young lady was actually my best friend um, as a young boy in primary school, infant school. We grew up together. She's gone on to do incredible things in football. She's represented England 50 times, scoring 15 goals. She's played for clubs like Arsenal, Chelsea, Juventus. This woman is a real inspiration and uh, I'm very privileged to call her a friend. Her name is Leanne Sanderson. Let's hear her journey. This is Living the Dream with Liam Norvell on Posh Gotney TV. I'm delighted to be joined on Living the Dream by a very old friend of mine, Leanne Sanderson. Leanne, how are you? Hello, Liam. I'm doing great. Thank you. Lovely to see your face. Thank you for coming on the show. So you're in New York at the moment? Yeah, I'm in New York. I'm in Manhattan. I'm, I'm over here training my kids as well as doing my TV work and stuff like that with this whole virtual online stuff. It's actually worked out perfectly because then I don't have to go to the studio, which I prefer, but then I can do both. So, yeah. So, look, we've been friends since we were six years old. You actually got me into football. Can you believe that? You 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 got me signed up to my first ever football team. Yeah, I know. I think it was my mum, to be honest. I remember when my mum saw you play when we were at Mercy Bridge. And she's like, and you were obvious. You were so much bigger than everybody else. Like, do you remember? Yeah. You were like a giant, like, <laughs> like you and Tommy Bonner when we were at Elms. But yeah. um yeah, they were good times, man. Really good times. I loved being at Worsley Bridge. It was brilliant. And like you and I were inseparable, weren't we? Like when we used yeah. to do, uh, what was it? Like show and tell on a Monday morning, every Monday. <laughs> you're like, who wants to speak? You'd be like, me and Liam will speak. Oh yeah, we went to footsies this weekend, played football. It was the same story. <laughs> Everyone in our class must have been bored of us because we literally used to say the same thing every single week because we just used to do everything together, didn't we? Oh, it was an amazing day. And looking back then... I mean, simpler times, but they were so fun. And then obviously you was playing football at Arsenal at such a young age. And I remember coming to watch you play and you was always so gifted and uh, you just live, live and breathe the game, don't you? Yeah, I mean, from the age of five years old, you know, it helps having a mum and dad like I do that are so supportive, you know. But from the age of five years old, I always knew I wanted to be a professional footballer as you know, and there wasn't even a professional team or a professional league, you know, for women at that time. So when I um, first played for Elms with you, um, that was obviously a boys team and I loved it. You know, we, we had a great time there. And then obviously when you're nine years old, I think it's 12 now, the girls obviously had to um, go and play on their own team, which I was gutted about because I loved that team. We had a really good team, great people and so close, you know. So then I got scouted for Arsenal, as you know, and a few other teams like Mia Wall and stuff. And then signed for Arsenal when I was nine and the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> and then and then you went to obviously Chelsea after that. Um, what was that like moving to a London rival? Yeah, you know, because I spent 12 years at Arsenal and I'd won everything by the time I was 18. Champions League, League, FA Cup, everything. I felt like I needed a new challenge. But to be honest, sometimes the grass isn't always greener because what I wanted to do was I wanted to play against Arsenal and challenge myself. Because at that moment in time, there wasn't the competitiveness like there is now. You know, there wasn't a Manchester City, um, all that Manchester United, all those teams that there are now when every game, you know, you don't know who's going to win. So I thought, how can I test myself? And there wasn't a professional league in America at the time. Um, and leagues weren't pro, you know, it was either semi-pro or amateur. And, you know, and, and to be honest, I went to Chelsea. I was captain there as well. They were great to me. And then when the opportunity came to go to America to get drafted and go fully pro, I appreciated Chelsea letting me leave because they saw that this was an opportunity that I couldn't turn down. And I appreciated that because I was still on the contract. But it was like, OK, the contracts in England were pro, but they weren't pro. Does that make sense? So you trained twice, three times a week. And your salaries weren't high, but it was almost like semi-pro contracts. So I appreciate the fact that Chelsea allowed me to come to America because they realised the opportunity and I'll always be grateful um, for them. But I think in hindsight, I probably would have stayed at Arsenal, um, but then I'm, I don't regret my decision. So it's a catch-22, really. What, what, tell me the experience of, of playing football and living in America. I mean, compared to living in England, I mean, you, and, you know, you're a home girl, you know, you, your mum and dad and you love being at home, but, you know, you've spent so much time away. I mean, what was what it like out in the States? Yeah, you know, honestly, I think it's the best decision I've ever made in my life, as much as that's a bold statement. You know, when I'm in America, um, for all the pros and cons of any country, you know, there's a lot of things that need to be better in America, as people have seen. But like, for me, like when I'm playing football here, when I have my life here, people are just more open minded. Now, there's a lot of states that are not open minded. So we'll leave those to it. But wherever I am and wherever I've lived, whether it be Philadelphia, Orlando, Portland, Oregon, like 
I find the people to be so like, you're literally, you'll go to pre-season the first day and you're having to like say, I can't come for dinner tonight for all these different parents that are asking you around. And it's amazing. Like the amount of support that you have. And I think that's what made me fall in love with this country that like, when I first came here, people recognised that you're here on your own. There was five foreign players, but it's not easy. I was 21, you know, first time I'd lived away from home in a completely um, small place in Philadelphia. No real friends or family around, you know. And it was one of those things where I appreciated the fact that everybody welcomed me and all the foreign players. And I think that makes a massive difference. I find in England, very much, people are very much like, well, why is she getting this? Why is he getting that? Why am I not getting that? Whereas here, they're like, I'm so glad you're on my team. Do you know what I mean? They're not threatened by your success. And if you're good, they think, you know, if you're good, that's going to make our team better. Yeah. Whereas I find that in England, when I played in England, not all the time, but when I came back five years ago, I just, things had changed quite a lot when it comes to the mindset. And when I went back to Arsenal, I was expecting it to be the way it was 12 years, like when I was originally there with my best friend and stuff like that. Your England career was 50, 50 appearances and 15 goals. How, how would you look back at your success there? Yeah, you know, I think people have different, you know, people gain or can, can appreciate their own success in different reasons. I still think that I could have been way more successful in England had I been given the opportunity with the coaches, with the way, when it comes to personality, I just don't think people ever knew how to handle me in England. Not that I needed to be handled, you know, I'm not saying I'm the perfect person, but I think sometimes people often think, you know, oh, who does she think she is? But then they get to know me and actually like, oh, actually, all right. Cause I'm not like that. You know me. I mean, I know we've not yeah. seen each other for a long time, but you know me, we know each other and I'll do anything for anyone. So I think sometimes um, I didn't feel like my personality was embraced in England as much, especially at England with the football association and stuff like that. So for me, I would always be proud to have played for England for 50 times, you know, um, and p- pulling on that, you know, the England jersey, seeing my mum and dad in the crowd, seeing the national anthem, playing in two World Cups, you know, winning a bronze medal in Canada when I won the penalty, which made us win the bronze medal. Like, those are moments that you never forget. But I do think sometimes I do, it does upset me sometimes the way that my England career ended because I feel like it ended quite abruptly Mm -hmm. in a way that wasn't really anything to do with me. And I've been kind of ostracized ever since the whole thing happened. So life goes on, you know, I don't walk around with any bitterness, but I do think sometimes I wish that like things were a little bit different, but everything happens for a reason, I guess. I have to ask about your move to Juventus. What, What was it like playing out there? Yeah, you know, it was amazing, like, to be honest, like, especially they signed me when I was injured. My first ever injury in my whole career, tore my ACL meniscus three years ago now. And they signed me when I was injured. So I came home for Christmas and I got um, an email from my agent at the time. And he said, Juventus are interesting. And I was like, wow, like, I needed this because I felt like when I got injured, no one really wanted me anymore. It's one of those things you're just replaceable. Do you know what I mean? Like when I was playing, I was starting every game. And then as soon as I got injured, people were like, oh, that's a long-term injury, that. Do you know what I mean? And then it's hard to like really get back in. But so when you went to, like when I went over there, they invited me over. Um, and my girlfriend at the time, we went over to have a look and it was amazing. And honestly, like that experience at the beginning was amazing. Like I was in the gym. My first day was with Dybala, Buffon, and Higuain because they signed me as like I was playing for the men's team. Like I was like buzzing. I feel like I was going to be playing for Juventus men because I was in the gym with them. I'm on the treadmill next to Buffon and like speaking to Allegri and no one else was really allowed in there. So it shows you how much they respected me, you know? So I will always be grateful for them for signing me when I was injured and investing in me. I think sometimes living in other countries, especially in places like Turin that are not very progressive with their mindset, the football, yes, fantastic. The fans were amazing to me, but living somewhere compared to visiting somewhere, you know, when my friends came over to visit, they were buzzing. They were like, this is amazing, you know, because they come for two days. But when you stay there long term, there's not really much to do. You know, it's very cold. It's a cold place. It's cold physically and very cold when it comes to like a lot of personalities. But I made some good friends there. And, you know, I still speak to um, a family that's there and they're great people. And I'll always appreciate Juventus signing me and then Ronaldo signed while I was there. (laughs) So, I mean, that just about says it all really. What was your fondest and most proud moment in your football career? I would say probably winning the quadruple with Arsenal in 2007, winning the Champions League, um, winning the bronze medal uh, in 2015. I think, I mean, I won the double with Juventus and I scored on my debut after being out for 18 months. So that is something that was a proud moment in my career because 
I didn't think I, I literally, when you're in a leg brace and you're on crutches, you don't even think you can ever be able to walk again, let alone yeah. play football. So I was just grateful that I was even given the opportunity to come on into that game at half time. Cause you know, when you come back from injury, you have to, you know, monitor your minutes. And like, when I came into that game and I just stepped onto the pitch, it was that feeling of, you know, we're like a kid in a, in a candy shop, like, you know, you're ready to go. But when I scored that goal, it was just a feeling of like, you know, I'm proud of myself here because no one sees that everyday physio rehab you go through because not everybody shares those things. I usually share things that are not so good on my social media because I think it's important to share things when you're, because people can relate to that because not everything is hunky-dory all the time. It's great if it is, but it isn't. But no one sees those times when you're so vulnerable and you have to allow yourself, you, te- you lose your independence when you're injured. So when I scored after my, on my, my debut, it was just an amazing feeling for me. So... I've been really lucky in my career because I've won everywhere I've gone, but I think that's not a coincidence either, you know, not in an arrogant way, but I think you make your own luck in life and when you're driven, you have goals and and you can achieve them. It's safe to say you had a fantastic career at loads of goals, loads of clubs. I mean, I can't believe it. I think 12 clubs I counted earlier when I was doing a bit more research. Um, So now let's talk about what you're doing now. I mean, I I can't keep you off my social media. (laughs) You are doing so much. I mean, Sky... BBC. I mean, it's just phenomenal how you're how you've now turned into this huge personality on TV and radio, and it, it's great to see. Yeah, it, it's been an interesting transition, really, because I haven't actually officially retired. Um, <laughs> and you know, it was when I was it was last year for the uh, Women's World Cup when I got asked to go to Qatar with Be in Sports, and I was there for five weeks, and like. I feel like I come alive. You know, sometimes people think they're calling is football or they're calling is law or whatever it might be. Like, mm-hmm. I love football. Eat, sleep and breathe it, as you know, right? But when I'm in the studio and when I'm talking about football, it's almost like, I wish I was like this in exams at school where I just used to want to be on the football pitch. You know what we were like. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you like school, but you're kind of co- constantly thinking about football. And when I'm on TV, especially when it's live and stuff, I love it. I absolutely love it talking about football. Like, and I feel like I've been revising for this exam my whole life, you know, because... We know football, we love football. And it's like, so for me now, it's almost like my career is transitioning into this because people like me, fortunately, you know, and they want me to be on there a lot. So that's nice. So, you know, I do want to still play, but then it's like, I'm enjoying what I'm doing and I'm not getting any younger. That's something that plays in my mind as well, because I don't think you're too old. You know, they say you're in your prime when you're 29 and you're 30, you're past it. Look at William. Do you know what I mean? He's not past it. Yeah. But like, um, I still want to play because I just want to have one more year that I just go back to that young girl that fell in love with the game because I fell out a little bit of a love of the game when I was at Juventus towards the end. And it makes me sad sometimes. But then at the same time, I'm really enjoying all the TV stuff. So it's fantastic. Yeah, Sky, BBC, Talk Sport, like what it's great and I love it. And the fact that a lot of it is virtually now is actually quite uh, good for me. It made me quite emotional the other day when I saw you on Soccer Aid. Um I remember back, we must have been 10 or 11 and we was at Stamford Bridge and we watched it together. And uh, after we spent two or three hours getting the autographs and signatures and everything. And then to see you on the pitch a couple of weeks ago was just, you know, the, the look on your face. I could, f- you know, I could feel the emotion coming through the screen. What was that like for you? Yeah, you know, it's funny you should say that, but I'm glad that we've shared these kind of moments together because no one can really appreciate your journey until you've lived it with me. You know what I mean? So it's the same, like when I was playing at Old Trafford, I've stood outside Old Trafford waiting for autographs as well, Mm -hmm. you know, and now I'm walking in there. It's unfortunate there wasn't any fans there, but honestly, like that whole entire time, I loved every minute of it. Like not just playing at Old Trafford and the training, but the conversations, you know, that I was able, we were able to have, because I knew a lot of the guys from before, like Wes Brown, but being able to sit there and chat with Robbie Keane, Darren Fletcher, you know, and we're just talking about football. You know, we could talk all night, you know, about football all the time. And, like, I was talking to them about players that I necessarily didn't really think were that good enough for Manchester United. But then you get an opinion from Michael Essien about what it's like to play against them and what it's like to play with each other. And you're thinking, OK, so now yeah. I understand. Do you know what I mean? So, for me... Being at Soccer A, being able to speak to people and even like people that are not footballers, you know, Jason Manford, great guy, love chatting with him, like Mo the Comedian, like just so many different types of people. Like, And on the last night we had like a concert with James Bay, um, Danny from McFly, you know, and Dermot Kennedy, like in the restaurant, because obviously because of COVID, they usually have a massive after party and everyone's yeah. families are there. But, you know, and then I'm on Old Trafford and Patrice Evra 
and like Mikel Silvestra, Patrice Everett passing me the ball and we're playing on the same side together. Like I used to literally have dreams about this league. Like literally, I would have a dream where I'd be playing Old Trafford and like, and also Rooney was obviously there. He's a good friend of mine, but he was the manager of the other team. So he's standing there watching Patrice Everett passing me the ball. And there was times when I was like, is this really real life? Like, to be honest, because like I said, I literally would have real dreams that felt so real. And you know, when you have a dream and you wake up and you're like, oh, it was a dream. But I played at Old Trafford with these players that, you know, will never really happen, you know, men and women playing together. But now, when I was at Soccer Aid, I just thought, and then I got, I got um, that night we had like a massive little like party and stuff. And then the next day when I was getting the train back with a few of the guys in that and Kelly and Kate, like, I was like, you know, when you get on the train, you're like, and I get home and I was sitting laying on bed, I was like, did that really happen? Like, you know, when you're having those out-of-body experiences, you're like, and I'm so glad that I lived every single piece of me there to the fullest. Even golf. I'm, I'm not a good golfer. Mm-hmm. They wanted us to do golf and I did it. I was awful. But why not? Harry Redknapp's there. You know what I mean? Harry Redknapp's my manager, Brian Robson, yeah. giving me pointers. Like, come on now. Like, I was like, literally like Cheshire Cat. <laughs> You'll never forget that, I'm sure. What's next for you, Leanne? What, 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 I mean, you, you seem to be evolving all the time with all, all these new projects but what's something that you would really like to achieve going forward now have you, have you got some goals that you think that, yeah that's me now yeah I have long-term goals and like I said like the tv work and the and the radio stuff it's something that kind of fell into place yeah I enjoy it and I want to continue to do it but it wasn't something I ever thought would happen so quickly you know so I think for me my long-term goals I've always wanted to own my own franchise in America um, not necessarily saying I'm a millionaire but get investors and I want to have similar to what you know, what David Beckham's done, where he has, you know, he has investors, he invests himself. And um, I, that's something I want to do because I want to have my own club where people get treated the way they deserve to be treated, where, you know, there's too many bully boy tactics in this day and age in coaching, especially in young kids. You know, I've got my academy in Manhattan. Um, and so that's something I'm really focused on. But coaching is not something I'm necessarily doing, want to do long term. Um, it's just something I enjoy doing because it, it helps the kids and they enjoy it and they feel confident, right? But for me, my long-term goals is to be part of a franchise and be able to be in a position um, where I can run things. A little bit like Karen Brady, really, I guess. You know, when you're a part of it and you're part of an organisation and you're able to make the decisions that it, it allow people to be themselves. So that's my long-term goal. But for now, I'm just going to keep, you know, doing what I'm doing, working hard and any the TV work that I'm doing, I love. I love going to the studio. I love talking about football. And, you know, I think it just goes to show you that when people say to me, like often a lot of people say, oh, I can't believe, it. I never imagined that this would happen to themselves. I never say that because I always knew from the age of five, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. And when I, when I turned pro when I was 14, it didn't feel weird to me because I'd already visualized that. Does that make sense? So for yeah. some people, yeah. I feel like an alien sometimes because they're like, you knew when you were five years old, I'm like, Yes, you just know. And when you speak to a lot of people, like I'm a huge fan of Beyonce, not saying I'm Beyonce, but she knew from the age of two that she wanted to be a singer. Yes, you have to be gifted. But I know a lot of people that were gifted, but they just didn't have that extra bit Mm. that can take you to that level. So I'm enjoying life, you know, and and on my journey. And, you know, the great thing about life, you never know where it's going to take you. And right now I'm on the Upper West Side in Manhattan. And yeah. Well, look, I've loved speaking to you and reconnecting after so many years. Uh, I love seeing all your success. Um, you are certainly living your dream, and I, and I love what you're doing now because it's you know it's a new career, but you're certainly showing how amazing you are at that as well. So keep up the good work, and uh, let's catch up with you next time in London. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Lee, and good luck with everything as well. Right, and it's great to see you as always. Thank you, Leanne. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.